Hello. Coach Heather here. Hi, I'm coming to you today to talk about emotional versus physical hunger, how we can tell the difference, how we can learn to spot the cues, and then when we do, what do we do about it? So while I'm waiting for a few people to log on, I thought I'd share my lunch with you today, which is a no-cook lunch. I am having my favorite, well, my, one of my favorite combinations. I'm having one scoop of super fruit and veg with a pink lemonade. I know I usually show you guys that I have it with lemon or wild berry, and it is delicious, but I also adore it with pink lemonade. So I mix the super fruit and veg and the pink lemonade with a little bit of warm water, warm it up, make a little slurry so that it helps to dissolve the powders. And then I throw ice and cold water on top and give it a good shake. And I have a delicious sweet tart lemonade berry drink. And I'm going to have that today with a vanilla wafer bar. So if you haven't had the wafer bars, these are meal replacements. You have them with a protein drink on most of your menus, and they will replace your breakfast, lunch, or dinner. And it's two wafers inside, and they look like this. And they taste like chocolate vanilla wafer cookies. Can't go wrong with that. So, hello, there's a bunch of you on. Say hi. Tell me where you're watching from. I would love to know that you're here. If you watch later on the replay, tell me you're watching on the replay and feel free to participate like we're here together and we'll come back and answer any of your questions and say hi no matter when you want to watch. So today I thought I'd spend a few minutes talking to you about physical versus emotional hunger. And I'm using a, hi Clissy, thank you. You know what, I got a little um, blonde put in it today, so thanks for noticing. Um, I am about, oh, I'm, I'm in our, what many of you call journal, our success planner, where you record your food each day. And every week there's a lesson or a topic to ponder. And I'm probably four weeks in, and it's the one labeled hunger, and there's physical hunger and emotional hunger. So you all have this. You can um, look at it yourself in your own planner. But being able to spot which type of hunger you have is really important. And it is very difficult at first to tell the difference. So you often feel like you're hungry. And you feel hungry legitimately like you need to eat. But just because we feel hungry does not mean that our body is hungry. It doesn't mean that our brain, our cells, our energy, our metabolism is hungry. Sometimes it can mean that our emotions are hungry. And we need to be able to spot the difference in the two so that we feed the body the right thing. If the body isn't physically hungry, it does not need food. If the body is emotionally hungry, if the body is hungry due to stress or anxiety or loneliness or depression, then we need to feed it something that will help with that. So we have to know the right thing to feed us. We have to know the, what kind of hunger we have so that we can then know how to feed ourselves. Let's start by talking about the differences in the two. Hello, I see a bunch of you on. Say hi if you're watching. So here's, again, I'm here in our planner, and we're going to talk about physical hunger first. And as you think about this list, you're going to notice some vast differences in when you're really physically hungry and when you have some sort of other hunger. So physical hunger is gradual. I'm not just sitting here perfectly satisfied and then starving. That's not how physical hunger goes. You get hungrier and hungrier over time when you're physically hungry. Physical hunger is open to all different kinds of food. When you're physically hungry, when your body's out of fuel and it needs something, it doesn't say, I only need chocolate. I am starving right now and all that will do is mac and cheese. That's not physical. Physical hungry is, hunger is open to all sorts of foods because physical hunger just needs some fuel. Physical hunger is typically based in the body, in the stomach. You will feel hungry, okay? Physical hunger, it doesn't happen up in here. It happens in the body. It can feel like a stomach growl, weak, um, low blood sugar. That's hungry, okay? It occurs out of a physical need, out of a lack of calories needing to eat. 
Um, it generally allows you to be deliberate and make choices. You're not so urgently hungry that you just couldn't slow down enough to make a good decision. Um, it stops when you feel full. If you're physically hungry and you eat, when you're full, your body will be satisfied. Emotional hunger can be a little different. <clears throat> so what is the difference? Let's talk about emotional hunger. Emotional hunger is often sudden. Emotional hunger occurs and I've got to have some chocolate. I need to eat right now. I could not stop myself. It just hit me and I had to do it. It's usually very quick. Because it usually, emotional hunger is driven in response to something that made you sad, mad, angry, frustrated, feel lonely, feel alone. And you had that feeling. And then to resolve that feeling, you need to eat. And you hear that you're hungry. Uh, emotional, behavioral, habitual hunger usually wants a specific food. So what I mean by that is usually it says, I want chocolate i need ice cream i want pizza it's specific okay it's generally very urgent whereas physical hunger is patient it comes on slowly and it will provide you enough time to get something to eat and make your meal whereas emotional hunger now i need it now i need it right the second it came on and it hit me and i had to eat and i couldn't wait physical uh, emotional hunger is often paired with an upsetting emotion or feeling or event so there's, if you step back and think what just happened, you can usually tie it to something that just occurred that you're needing to soothe or calm or deal with or get rid of. Um, it's come sometimes automatic or absent-minded. I don't even know what happens. I barely remember it, right? That's what happens when it happens, this automatic response. I just went in and I ate the food. I don't even really remember what I had. That's emotional hunger. Emotional hunger often doesn't stop when you're full. This is why when we stress eat, emotional eat, when we eat for reasons related not to being hungry, we can stuff ourselves to the point we're going to bust. That's emotional hunger. It's not solved by having just the right amount of food and getting physically full. It means we're trying to stuff an emotion, bury an emotion, hide an emotion, uh, avoid. And sometimes emotional eating not sometimes, most of the time, emotional eating is going to be associated when you're done with feelings of guilt, um, with feeling bad about it, with feeling like you want to hide it. Uh, when we emotional eat, um, there's often some negative feelings associated with it afterwards. Okay, so first off, the next time you find that you're hungry, I want you to think back to our list. Am I physically hungry in my body? Am I light, weak-headed? Has this been coming on slowly over the last hour or two? Has it been a long time since I last ate? And it probably is time to eat. And I feel like I need to go in the kitchen and make some food. That's physical hunger. It's okay. It's been a while since you ate. It's either time for your next meal or it's time to mix up a protein drink because that will get you through. That's physical hunger, and it will give you time to think through it and prepare the next thing or make the drink, and it will be satisfied when you're done. If that's not what happened, if you were overtaken by a desire to eat, if you're mindlessly eating and you don't know why, if you find yourself in the kitchen romancing the cupboard and looking at all of the food and opening the freezer and staring and looking in the fridge, that's not hunger. That is Boredom, frustration, anxiety, loneliness it is an emotional eating. And emotional eating is not tied to physical hunger, but it can feel like it. Your body can tell you, I need food. But if you logically know you don't need food, if you logically know you've just eaten and you're not physically hungry and you scan your body, then you come back to this list of emotional eating and you ask yourself, where am I and what's going on? What just happened? What occurred? What am I feeling? I'm feeling mad. I'm feeling angry. I'm feeling bored. I'm feeling rejected. And that feeling is uncomfortable to me and I don't like it. And in the past, it was effective if I could just get rid of that emotion by burying it with food, by eating and eating and eating and tasting and experiencing food. I could drown it out. I could drug it. I could medicate it. 
and I could make it go away. But now I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to use new tools in my toolbox because I'm not physically hungry. And if I'm not physically hungry, then food will not solve the problem. If I have anger, I need to deal with the anger. If I have loneliness, I need to deal with the loneliness. And even if you can't deal with the thing or the person that has made you angry, even if you can't resolve it, even if it's out of your hands, you can deal with the emotion. When you're angry, you kick it out, you exercise it out, you move it out, you breathe it out. When you're lonely, you connect, you call someone, you get on a Zoom, you pick up the phone, you, you get in here in the group and you participate, and you reconnect with people to help with the loneliness. Whatever the emotion is, there's things that you can do to help soothe yourself in new ways. It can be deep breathing, exercise, prayer, meditation, connection, journaling. Sometimes it's just as simple at first as breathing. Breathing acts as a speed bump. And the speed bump will take you from I must eat right now. There's no other solution. I'm hungry and I got to have the chocolate to I think I can make some choices and I know what to do and I'm going to go like up a protein drink and then I'm going to take a walk and I'm going to call my sister and I'm going to talk through this and I'm going to get over it. That speed bump can often be just breathing because when we breathe in, hold, breathe out, we bring oxygen to the brain. The brain is hijacked when we're very stressed or very emotional. The brain is operating really fast and furious. <laughs> And we pull some oxygen up here, and it calms us down just enough to go, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I got a handle on this. I can control this. I do not need to go eat that cupcake right now because it is not going to change anything. Yes, it looks good. Yes, it smells good, but it is not going to make this problem go away. It's only going to make me feel bad after. So I'm going to go drink a glass of water, take a walk, do some deep breathing, and think through this. And that speed bump, you just need a moment. Give yourself a moment. You earned it. You deserve it. Give yourself the moment so that you don't have to react to every emotion and every feeling that comes your way. Because you are this, I've talked about this before, but when these emotions get you, the tail is wagging the dog. And you now have tools in your toolbox. And that tail does not need to wag that dog any longer. You are in control. And by breathing deep, stepping back, calming yourself down, you will, you will have the answer you need to resolve the issue. If you're physically hungry, You'll go make a meal or drink a drink. And if you are emotionally hungry, you will find emotional food to feed you. You will find the fuel you need, the food you need, the energy, the peace, the prayer, the relaxation, the deep breathing, the connection that you need to help you get through it. Okay? All right. So one second. I'm going to have a couple comments here and I was not in the right space. I might not be able to see my comments for some reason. And if they're here and you're commenting and it's not showing it to me, I'm sorry. I will come back and comment to you later. Again, I was reviewing with you physical versus emotional hunger. And it is in your success planner. And there's a nice little checklist of the differences in your physically hungry versus emotionally hungry. And I kind of love just slowing down and thinking about it and then employing some tools that will help you to either give yourself food when you need it or give yourself whatever other type of nurturing or care that you need when you're not physically hungry. So I hope you all have a beautiful day. I want to wrap by reminding you the most important thing you can do for your weight loss program is to go in and weigh in with your coach. Your center and your weight loss coach care about you. They want the very best for you. And you get 15 minutes every week to sit down across from someone else who wants to help you be your best self, who wants to help you make plans and set goals and individualize the approach so that you can reach your weight loss goals. If you have not been into your center this week, I encourage you to go in. Right now when we get done, 
send a text, make a call, schedule an appointment so that you're in your center in the next day or two because we're looking forward to seeing you and we're going to help you reach your goals. Have a beautiful day. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.